Imagine for a moment that you were living in the time of the Apostle Paul. You and your people, along with the rest of the known world, have lived your entire existence under the rule of a foreign government, the mighty Roman Empire. The customs of these people are different from your own. They serve many gods and have built their temples in your homeland. They collect taxes from you to build their empire. They install rulers in your land to keep the peace and crush the hint of any rebellion with an iron fist. They allow you to worship the one true God and follow your customs, but it is clear you are living under their rule. You are reminded of this every day as you walk the streets or visit the marketplace. On the corner, in every public place, you see the embodiment of this power, the Roman soldier outfitted in the armor of war. Every piece of gear he wears communicates power and strength. You know just by looking at him that he is in control and you are not. When we consider the impression the Roman soldier made on the people of Paul's day, it is little wonder he chose the image when instructing believers on how they need to be equipped to stand against their enemy, the devil. Just as the Romans crafted elaborate pieces of armor to protect every part of the soldier in every situation, so believers in Christ need to take up the elaborate armor of God to protect against every strategy and tactic of Satan. Paul's instruction to his readers hold true for us today. I mean, we need to be ready to stand against all attacks. But how do we do this in a practical way? What does it actually mean to equip each piece of spiritual armor that God provides? This is what we will be discussing during the next six weeks as we walk through Paul's words in Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. And as we do, it is my hope you will discover that God has given you everything you need to recognize your enemy, defend against his schemes, and even go on the offense against him. For the truth is that with God on your side, and by equipping the armor he has provided, you can overcome any attack of the enemy. As we begin this study, I want you to notice how Paul begins the passage we will be looking at in Ephesians. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Paul is clear that we face a real enemy and Jesus said this enemy does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. John described him as the deceiver of the whole world. The apostle Peter wrote of him, your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. As followers of Christ, we're under continual attack from an enemy who wants to destroy our faith, our families, our very way of life. This is why we need the armor of God we need to be prepared to face the reality of the enemy's opposition with strength. And Paul's challenge to the Ephesians to be strong in the Lord is one we find throughout the Bible. When God called Joshua to lead the nation of Israel, he told him to be strong and of good courage. And David said to Solomon, be strong and have a good courage and do not fear nor be dismayed. An angel of the Lord said to Daniel, O man greatly beloved, Fear not, peace be to you. Be strong, yes, be strong. So when we read Paul's words to the Ephesians to be strong, we're not surprised. I mean, this is God's call to action. Logically, 
We then assume Paul is commanding us to be strong. 